y'all, man. It's your boy, Big Tone. Here fucking with this one, man. Make sure you subscribe below. Check out the new interview and shit, man. Yeah. Big Tone, Antioch, California. I started doing music probably when I was like 19 years old, man. Got a little late start. Um, for those who know my genre, know my big bro Woody, rest in peace. Um, pretty much gave my first shot, man. So just a young buck running wild through the town. You know, um, I guess we built a, 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 a kind of a reputation through the town of Antioch of uh, just running wild. And once bro heard I was doing music and it got in his hands, he was impressed, man, and, and just gave me my shot and put me on one of his Northern, Northern Exposure compilations, which was a Northern Exposure 5. I had a song called That Good Life. And from then on, bro, it was just like, man, he hit the ground running. You know what I mean? I just remember pulling up the car shows, house parties, and I heard that shit getting slapped. And it just kind of gave me my, my, um, my feet wet in the game. And just being a hustler, man, I ran with it, built a little studio, um, you know, my mama's garage and got my own little producer. You know, I have, have an artist like, like Jacket was sliding through, man, Hus, the My Figures, AWAX, just anybody that was popular locally at the time, sliding through and just, like I said, man, just hit the ground running, Brody, you know what I mean? Um, back then, bro, it was, uh, it was a little different, man. Like I'd say gang banging was more of a thing back then than it is now, you know what I mean? So. Like, like I'd say like in fourth grade, I first got jumped by rival gang members, you know what I'm saying? And, and it's like you're forced to kind of choose a side being Mexican, Hispanic. So um, that was kind of more the lifestyle and the trends back then where we were at. And uh, so of course, you know, walk out, you're walking to school, that's your environment. That's more what I got caught up in. And um, you know, a lot of people that listen to my music know the history and uh, you know, lost a lot of my friends to the game, you know, lost a lot of my good loved ones to the shit and um, blessed to be here. So I kind of changed my narrative, you know, changed my way of thinking and uh, put out a different type of energy, try to help out my little homies get money and be more successful. And so far, I'm blessed to be here. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, now nah, it's like that, too, because it was so small at the time. But when you got a small group of people like that, and it's, it, I, I can't explain. Oakland's a lot bigger, you got a lot more going on, so your number's gonna be bigger, but it was smaller in our area, and, and I think it's, you know, it's bigger now, it's more on the news and stuff like that, but there was uh, motherfuckers gang banging out there, you know what I'm saying? People was, uh, was banging, and, and you know, when you got young, young cats out there with nothing to lose and, and, and nothing to do, you know, shit goes down, so, you know, we had our little thing going, and, you know, just, yeah, we, it, it was popping for, it was popping, bro. So I don't know how else to explain it, man. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's kind of like when you're Hispanic and it's either you talk and act a certain way or you're, you're like, hey, where you from? You know what I'm saying? It's kind of like you, we had both out there. It wasn't, it wasn't just, back then it was kind of both sides. So it's like you either had to choose up. You had you know, these dudes and you had these dudes, but around where I lived, it was mostly Northerners. That's all I seen. All my homeboys are Northerners, you know what I'm saying? My OG partners are all Northerners. And so, you know, that's just how it goes, man. That's what you see, that's what you're exposed to as a youngster. And, you know, that's what you idolize, you know? You see the big homies on the block getting money. You see them on the low riders, you see them getting the females, you know? I'm walking to school, I see the homeboys chilling. I'm looking up to him. I ain't looking up to the dude that went to college. I'm looking up to the big homie on the block. So, you know, of course, you know, when you're young, that shit catches you, you know what I'm saying? I won't even say jump into it. Like I said, it was kind of like, just like you kind of siding up, like either you're gonna be a, a, a it's either like you're gonna be a, kind of like a man and man up or you're just gonna get yoked every day, you know what I'm saying? And I remember like, I was trying to stay away. I was like, I just wanted to be riding on lowrider bikes and we had a little lowrider bike club. I was like, I don't wanna fuck with none of that shit, but it's to the point like, Dude, dudes was on me, dudes kept, you know, putting pressure on me and to the point where like, they just, like I remember they stabbed one of my best friends when we were young and then that kind of like triggered something where, where like, it was more hate now. It wasn't about a color no more. It wasn't about a street or nothing. It was more like, fuck these dudes, you know what I'm saying? And it just built up. And as I got older, you know, those are the homeboys I roll with and that's what ended up happening. You know, it wasn't like a decision. This is what I want to be when I grow up, you know what I'm saying?
he was uh, like eighth grade. What do you? How old are you when you're in eighth grade? Going to ninth? Like yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah, so that kind of like triggered it like that. I mean, we was kicking it, but I won't say gang banging until you're actually banging. Kicking it with the homies don't count until you're actually out there doing shit, you know what I'm saying? When I was young, I was I got into, I guess, uh, slanging. I was a little D-boy, you know what I mean? Young hustler, I was in high school, had a Cadillac on, on Pro Paint, on Gold Ones, all that, you know, just a young hustler. I always had that mentality. and. Um, one of my homeboys, little rascal, rest in peace, he was like, hey, I got a homeboy that produces, he makes beats. And I don't know why he's telling me that, it don't make sense, I don't, I don't know, but back then producers weren't as common as they were now. Now everyone, you know, has beats. Back then it was a little different. So I remember pulling up to the block, introduced me to dude, and he was just playing some of his beats. And I was like, like impressed, I'm not used to hearing that shit, you feel me? And, uh, and I was just, my, the little light bulb went on in my head, like, man, I think we could do something with this, bro. Like, I started seeing like dollar signs and, and shit. And uh, I tried to put on a few, like, just try to get like a little rap thing together, but I just started doing it myself. Homeboy was impressed. He went to a little studio, did a song. It got back to Wood. Wood, Wood liked it. We went and met him, showed him. And I just remember him saying like, bro, I would love to have you on my next project. You're dope. And it was like, just like that, bro. He just gave me that opportunity once he heard. We had already met a couple times through, through, through some hood shit, just through hood parties and stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? But he was juice that motherfuckers like us was rapping. You know, we held the, the town proudly, so it was easier like to, uh, to and then the people liked the song, you know? People, it was a good song that people liked, you know? People uh, gravitated towards it, you know? I'm gonna be real with you, I thought I made it. I thought I was a dude, I was like, shit, I was 17 years old, or uh, no, how old was I? I tripped and I was 17 when I met him. When the song came out, I was, it was like, uh, I was 20 years old, bro. And yeah, I just felt like I made it, bro. I thought I was like the dude pulling up to all the hood parties, everybody slapping that shit. That's, I would hear that from, I would go to like San Jose, back to um, there's different cities, bro, and I would hear that shit, you know what I'm saying? So it was dope, it was a good feeling. Huge for us, bro. It's because uh, I wanna say like our culture, before that, the rappers that you know, I'm not gonna take, there's some some rappers that were spitting, but some of the rappers were kind of too, I wanna say Chicano-ish, Cholo-ish, you know, the, the too swag, which is cool, you know, but it was a small market that could get to that. So when Wood came out, he was gassing shit. Like, we weren't used to that shit. Like, this motherfucker's gassing, bro. So it, it, he, he, took it, he took it to a whole nother level, bro, where everyone respected. It wasn't just the, the Cholos and the homeboys anymore. It was like, Damn, that motherfucker got heat, bro. And he produced his own shit, you know what I mean? So, yeah, that was, it was a huge impact, bro. Bro, I just took the bull by the horns. I built a little studio, went to Guitar Center, bought a keyboard, microphone. Uh, the first dude I went to the studio that I, that I met, I paid him to come hook my shit up and um, just said, fuck it, I'm gonna do this, you know what I mean? Just just started working on the album right off the bat, bro. Like, I didn't put too much thought into it. Just started having cats slide through. Like I said, Jacka was sliding through. We had a mutual friend. He came through and got like on three songs on my first album. Um, the rest of the, uh, like I said, Hus got on shit, uh, Wax, uh, just just uh, Wood and all the East Coco cats. So it was a big deal to me, bro. Being never having no history in music and having these dudes that I used to listen to, it was a big deal for me, you know what I'm saying? I was telling homie, I just found the, uh, the computer from those recordings. So I literally got the, all the, rough, the raw vocals from like everybody, you know what I'm saying? So it was kind of dope. I used some of Woody's uh, verses sampling on some new shit. It sounds like he's on the song, it's crazy, bro. You know what I mean? It was dope. No, no, I mean, it definitely put us in a box at one time. You know, like I had to kind of start, when I first started, that was my market. That's all I noticed was listening to my shit was straight gangbangers, bro. You know what I mean? Like, that's all that was fucking with me. So I remember, like, just having to, just, just kind of like trying to figure out how I could break out this box a little bit because I felt like I had something more to offer than just that. So I kind of like started doing songs more for the females here and there. I'll throw a few up in there and, and, and um, I tried to strategically like clean it up a little bit, you know what I'm saying? And I, it was working. I had most of my fan base end up being females, you know what I mean? I'd go to a car show, set up a booth, and I'd have a line full of, you know, homeboys and homegirls, but 
but it was a benefit for my people at the time, but it, it trapped us, like, in this box. Like, we weren't able to do shows. So, like, anytime they would, they would book us for a venue, the police would come shut it down. The crowd would bring this and that. But to this day now, I don't push that line in my music, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm too grown. It look like me being a grown-ass man trying to influence youngsters to do a certain thing. So now I show the, I have a belief of, you know, or we have a belief we're supposed to better ourselves. So, like, we've elevated up. I try to push a, a message of homies getting money now and be successful and become somebody. So I think the message has cleared up where it's opened up more doors for me. It's not just holding me down. Like, you can't do this because you're that now. Now they listen to it and they see we actually have uh, legit businesses. We actually have things now. You know, these dudes are real dudes now. They come from something and they've evolved. So I think there's a bigger respect now for what we do. You know what I'm saying? Rather than just stamping gang member rappers, you know what I'm saying, than that. So. I, mean, I mean, to me, bro, like, if you're really, really in the game, you should know better. Like, I think people that are insecure need to show more. You know, hey, I got 20 guns on me. I got this. I got killers with me. Why do you, like, if do you think Al Capone was running around saying gang, gang, and I got killers with me, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I think if you're really in the game, you don't have to do that, bro. People, what's, what's, uh, what's the saying? What's understood doesn't even be explained. So like, yeah, if you want to be known and you want to be seen, you're putting that light out there. You got to understand social media, everyone can watch you. You got law enforcement watching you. You got every agency paying attention to you now. So yeah, I got this gun. I'm showing I'm going to shoot you. But as soon as somebody gets smacked, they're going right back to that video. You know what I mean? So my advice, man, is just... You know, like, you are what you are in this world. You, 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 whatever energy you put out and who, what you want to achieve, that's what you will achieve. You know, when I was young and I wanted to be the, a, a street dude and this and that, I achieved that. Now I got older, I wanted to be more successful and, and, and business orientated, and that's what I'm achieving. You know what I'm saying? So whatever you want to be in life, you could be. If you want to be a stone cold killer, you could be a stone cold killer. If you want to be successful, you can. You know what I mean? We're like an OG now, bro. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's dope that, you know, like I know, I know my part. I know my position. I know that I'm blessed to have a following still. I'm blessed to have people still fuck with my music when I drop. And um, I'm good with that. I don't need to follow trends. I don't need to sound like what's current. I don't need to do any of that shit. And um, I just do me and people fuck with it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I know I ain't going to be the next big thing. I'm not aiming for that. You know what I'm saying? So... With, with what I've built, with the people that fuck with me, I'm, I'm juiced about it, you know, I'm, I'm great, I'm grateful for it, and um, I just do really music to feed the people that fuck with me. Like I said, I ain't trying to go no further with it, I'm not trying to be the next big thing. That time has came and went, and um, I just, I just, uh, I'm grateful for what I have and keep rocking, you know what I'm saying? I would say back then you had to be more of a street dude. Like, like back then is, you had to kind of be real to rap. Like if you was rapping, you're gonna have everyone like checking your credentials and shit. You know what I'm saying? Like when I had to go to different cities, like we would have to tap in with the right people and stuff. Now it's people don't care about that. You know, you can be who you want to be. And I mean, it's, it's changed. I don't think it's like rap no more. It's more hip hop and shit, I guess. You know, I don't know. But definitely it's the kind of characters that are in the, in, in the industry and, and it's just evolved into something bigger, you know? And I, I don't hate on it. I think it's cool. You know what I mean? As long as you stay in your lane and be true to you. You know, I, I don't like seeing that somebody that I grew up listening to trying to follow the trends and become somebody they're not. And like, man, I used to bump that dude, you know, fuck, look at him, you know, I ain't gonna say no names or nothing, but you know, just, I think if people stay in their lane and, 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 and what works for the new generation is working for them, obviously. What work for the old cats, you know, it works for them, you know. I mean, at that time, it was, I think at the time I was doing good, like, I think, what album did I, was that on, bro? Like my third one or second one? From the streets of California. That was, uh, the fourth one? Yeah. I don't remember, fucking, uh, yeah, I don't know, bro. At that time, I think I was just doing, like, what I felt was doing good for my people, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, I mean, I don't think it, like, ever blew up like that. We ain't never had no radio player, none of that shit, but it did do good in the streets, bro. I did hear, I did get a lot of love. Uh, I did get a lot of love on it, bro. You know what I'm saying? I, I definitely have my sound, you know? I have my sound that, that uh, and it's funny, like, it just recently I realized I got an old school sound because I sent a song to a newer artist that we talked about working, and it's the first time someone's ever told me, like, hey, I wasn't really, it's not my style, bro, can we do something different? 
You know what I mean? And I was like, yeah, that's cool. But then I was realizing his sounds way different than mine. So I definitely have my old school sound, bro. And like I said, it's at this point in my career is if I try to change it now, I feel like I'll disappoint everybody that follows me. You know what I'm saying? And that's not true to me. So I'm going to stick to my old school sound, bro. And, and it's definitely got a lot of uh, early 2090 vibe to it. I try to mix it up a little bit to make it sound a little newer, but it's still old school for sure. You know what I mean? Bay Area cats, bro. Anybody from the Bay back then. I think back then it was uh, IMP, Kootenai, C Fresh, you know, Selsky, uh, you know, uh, Messi Mar, you know, just just uh, Sacramento rap. You had Sibo, you had, you know, just that whole generation, man. I mean, there's a whole list of names. UDI, 11.5. Um, I listened to all that shit, bro. I grew up on all that. You know, of course, then, you know, like Woody and all the homeboy rap, too, was a big, big part of my influence. But, yeah, a lot of Bay Area stuff, bro. Definitely. Mac Dre, E-40. I mean, I throw my boy Wood up there for sure. Um, Mac Dre would, the last person would have to be, it's, I'm probably going to forget a big name, everyone's going to be on my helmet about it. Um, Mac Dre, E-40, Wood, and um, Jacket, bro. The legends, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, for sure.